In my village, there is this beautiful house right on the beach. The house is not mine. I did not build it or design it, but I still influence its appearance in a small way. More precisely, not the house itself, but the wall in the front of it, using a blender. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, more about that later. If you follow my channel, you know that I mostly make cinematic animation or still images in Blender. I have never done an architectural project. But one day I got a call from a house owner I know from before. The owner showed me this photo as a reference for what he want on the wall in the front of the house. Only the pattern should be in the shape of waves and the construction material will be stone. It is about this wall, more precisely four separate walls about 50 meters long. Later, I found out that this effect is called parametric wall. So, my task would be to draw a profile section or blueprint for 470 panels and mark on the wall where each panel goes. The stone would be cut according to the blueprints, once in place each panel should sit in the market spot. Given that no filling or skirting will be used, the panels go directly to the wall, they should sit exactly between the upper stone slab and the lower wall. If they are larger, they will not be able to enter, and if they are shorter than 1 or 2 mm, they will hang in the air. Most of this work from pinches have ratio of 1 by 1, but in our case it will be too dense and would create large coasts. The thickness of the stone is 3 cm, we decide that the distance between two panels will be 7 cm. First, I measure each wall and put the measurements in the blender. I started with a 20 meter long plane, it is the length of the longest wall in one piece. After that, I added a thickness of 50 cm. The widest panel can be about 15 cm wide, plus 10 cm wall, multiplied by 2, because the blender will create an effect on both sides. I will cut one half off. The second plane with the array modifier will serve us as a cutting object or a boolean object. I set a distance of 10 cm, the distance between the panel is 7 cm and the thickness of the panel is 3 cm. Now, I just need to increase the array until I cover the entire wall. Plane serves only as a boolean, I don't want to be visible, so I set it as a bounce. To add thickness, we need another solidify modifier with a thickness of 3 cm. Now we have a parametric wall but perfectly flat, how to get a wave effect. In order to shape the mesh procedurally, we need a displacement modifier. And a black and white texture. Let's see first how the displacement modifier work. Each pixel contains the brightness value from 1 to 100. For the blender, the darkest pixel has value of 0 and the brightness one has value of 100%. This percentage refers to the value of 10 cm. Blender has a large selection of procedural textures. But when I select any, we don't get what we want. This is because we don't have enough mesh to modify. If we go to edit mode, we can see that we have only 4 vertices. But since the wall is 10 times longer along the x-axis, we will get 10 times less mesh per x-axis. To correct this, we need to add loop cuts to get regular squares, more precisely 9 loop cuts. Subdivision will work correctly on all sides.
Now, when we change the texture, we see that it affects the wall. But there is a problem. With none of these textures, no matter how much I play with the options, I wasn't able to get the wave look I wanted. These are some of the results I got with Blender procedural textures. I quickly created the environment and the house to get a better impression of how it could look in reality without bothering too much with the realism and details. This is a test version with a logo of the house. We see interesting options, but not waves we want. Before we continue with the video, let's talk about Squarespace. Squarespace is all-in-one website builder, best known for its stunning design, which are completely flexible and large number of tools, which make it easy to establish your online presence, whenever you want to create a blog, portfolio, web shop or something else. The platform is completely drag and drop, so you can easily add content and rearrange it on your pages without having to touch any single line of code. Squarespace has a number of social media features and integration that make it easy to share your content and grow your following on social media. You can simply use Squarespace built-in tools to schedule and publish posts to your social media accounts or include social media buttons so that the people may share your content with their followers. Squarespace has a several features that make it easy to create social media friendly content. For example, you can use Squarespace drag and drop editor to create image and videos that are optimized for social media. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Bulgaria to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. Fortunately, there is also an option to use external texture. First, I try to import the wave texture we use as a reference. We can see that this is working, but is barely visible. That's because the resolution of the photo is very low, not even 100 pixels on the x-axis. We need extremely high resolution so that we can get details and smooth lines. For example, about 20,000 pixels along x-axis. Also, the aspect ratio of the texture must be in the ratio of about 10 by 1, which is also the ratio of the biggest wall. If the aspect ratio didn't fit, we would have to choose between repeating or stretch texture. It is clear that something like this is impossible to find on the internet. The only option is to create such a texture myself. I set the aspect ratio that matches the wall and the orthographic camera. With Shift A under texture, I looked at what is offered and it's most similar to waves. I almost forget that the blender has a wave texture. Now all I have to do is play with the settings until I get the shape I want. But all waves are parallel. To get overlapping waves, I duplicate the wave texture, change the direction with distortion and mix the two textures with multiply blending mode. This whole process of creating textures that makes sense took a while. I created about 20 variations that I think might work and tested them in Blender. These are some examples. In the end, we decide on this pattern on the wall which is the longest and highest, and therefore the most visible. We choose other texture for other walls, but since they are much smaller, only one part is visible.
When I put the texture in Blender, it looked good, but wasn't intense enough. This is because the gradient doesn't have sharp enough transition. I fixed this by creating several stronger color ramp gradients and multiplied them into one. But we still have a few problems that we need to be solved. This means that we don't have 12 cm but a maximum of 8 in the upper part to avoid intersection with lump, while in the middle we can go much higher. I solved that with a gradient texture. With color ramp I can control the intensity of the roundness. The lower wall has the slope so that the water does not accumulate. The part up to the wall is raised by about 3 mm. This could cause problems that the panels would not be able to go in. I solve this by selecting all the lower right vertices and press G, Z, 0.003. G for grub, Z to stick for Z axis, 0.003 is value of 3 mm. Now all panels are raised by 3 mm in the lower right corner. The largest wall consists of two parts, the second part of the wall is lower. This creates this intense and ugly gap between two walls. I tried proportional editing, but it just couldn't turn out something smooth enough. In the end, I returned to gradient texture again. This time in Photoshop, I created a patch by combining two gradient textures. Once I got it in the right place, the transition finally looks smooth enough. The next step was to cut off the excess with the boolean modifier. Given that the wall on the lower part is uneven, each panel has a different height and each panel must sit exactly in place, there is nothing left but to measure the height of each panel separately. With the help of this tool and after a lot of measurements, it was time to enter the values into the blender. If I enter the value directly into the column, I will not only shrink it, but also stretch it, which would lead to a change in shape. The only way is to cut the excess part. I did this with K or knife. First, I lined up green cubes with ordinal numbers so I know exactly which panel I was cutting. It is important here that the origin point is not in the middle, but at the top. Thus, with a change in the dimensions, only the lower part changes. After that, I enter the value in millimeters for each column. And cut off the excess with a knife. Finally, it's time to export. With numpy slash key, I isolated one panel at a time together with the camera. I set up the camera, it is important that it is orthographic to avoid any perspective. To make the lines more visible, in edit preferences under themes, I created a theme with more contrast. For export, I use viewport render. These are the final blueprints that I sent to the cutting room. And this is after the stone has been installed on the wall. The shots were taken with a mobile phone, not the best quality, but if you like the final result, please like and subscribe.
In the description there is a link to the house if you are interested in renting it. And also a link to my website where you can find my Blender step by step tutorials. Check out other videos on the channel if you are interested in Blender.